Yes, yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Ahlan. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, giving this opportunity to make this presentation. I am quite happy to see the attendance and the participants are from different, uh, uh, from different topics, from uh, economics, from sociology, from bi biology. So I'm quite happy to share because in my presentation, it will not be the same as classical presentation, or I just would like to share my uh, point of view and also to share with you what I am supposed to think about the future. So let me share my presentation with you first. <clears throat> Can you see my presentation, please? Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Okay. Can I start now? Okay. Uh, I consider I will be a little bit different from my uh, uh, my previous uh, presenter. I consider that COVID nineteen. I like it. Or oh, you'll be surprised. Say that what happened to you? To you? I mean, I like it for the reason it's it's a kind of an alarm clock. It's an alarm clock to say that we have to wake up. Because for mice, I mean, what I have seen uh, over the world, COVID-19, there is no difference. And I think uh, Professor Amel mentioned this point. There is no difference between developing and developed countries, which means when you see the statistics from health point of view, the statistics are higher in developed rather than in developing countries. So the thing that pushed me to think about what will be the future. And uh, also Dr. Benbouzian, or Professor Mbouzian mentioned the point about the swan, <coughs> the black swan. It's unpredict unpredictable. Yes, it's unpredictable. It's, it depends how, how you consider it and how you... So this is why when I decide to make my, my choice about the title, I said COVID-19 as a driving force for knowledge sharing to challenge any crisis for the future. Because it's a health... Yes, I'm sure it's a health issue but the problem, we can face any challenges, any crisis. It can be a health crisis, it can be economic crisis, it can be war crisis. So this is why I consider, as I said to you, I am very positive in considering the, uh, the, uh, the COVID-19 as really as a motivator, as a motivator, because now it's time to review everything. If I take the, uh, the example, some many countries that I have participated during this, uh, this webinar, some universities are concentrating only to, de to deliver the lecture. So their, fo their focus, it was only on online, delivering online, which is good. I mean, this is, but some countries, they have this challenge, they cannot, it, due to the network problem, due to telecommunication problem, due, due, due to that. So what should we do for the future? It's, a, it's a reasonable. At the same time, some people, they are thinking that it's only the solution that we have to deliver lecture or using distance learning. I have already, and in 2002, I published a paper related to e-learning. And of course, in e-learning, there are, of course, are different points of view that I don't want to discuss it today because it's not my, my, my uh, focus today. Is My focus is about of course, the uh, COVID-19 as a motivator. And as you see, I am very positive and I'm optimistic because as I said to you, COVID-19 is an alarm clock. It's an alarm clock. It means I said, we have to wake up. We need to wake up. We don't have to, to talk about history or to concentrate in one thing. We have to concentrate in everything because COVID-19, it's touched everything and every everyone doctors in health they said just clean your hand and uh, alhamdulillah no virus virus will be killed but this virus has stopped airlines has stopped the economy have have etc so it means that we have to think and this is why i am positive because we need to wake up and we need to to consider if i just for example i mean give some information that COVID-19, as mentioned in red, I said, raging across all sectors. There is no sectors that cannot be touched by this, 
economy sector, social sector, psychology sector, doctors, health, whatever, whatever you think. So, of course, people, they have to, to sit. Economists, they sit together and say, okay, the impact. We know the impact. I don't need to discuss the impact. Impact, it's automatically negative impact on economy. So now we have to think how to solve the problem for the future. And they think you are reading from the newspaper or from the, any, any, any social media or any media, you see that many big companies, they become bankrupt. So what about our situation in developing countries? And if, if even I am presenting from Saudi Arabia, but I have to talk about my country. I am Algerian, I am talking about my aunt. It means that it's time to say, okay, what should we do? Not only to face the economic crisis, as I mentioned here, the a global economy, not only national economy, has hit the recession. It means, خلاص, we arrive at the level of the bottom and the financial, financial crisis is there. If we talk about health, you see the statistics, we are reaching now 9 million and we, 9 million 3,073. And about death, we have about 480. It means I'm talking about half million of people are dead. In the same time, governments over the world, they spend about 13 million, uh, trillions, not millions, it's trillions to stabilize the economy. But is it possible? And what is our position? What are, what are we? If I'm talking about the social risk, I mean social recession, I think uh, one of the presenters, uh, I mean, she mentioned about the social effect, which means that the challenge here, if you see from economic point of view, I think it's clear that the statistics that every sector, look at the bottom, every sector has been passed. I mean, and this information, I, I took it from McKinsey, and it shows that every sector, if food, information, real estate, textiles, services, hospitality, is touched. Of course, the impact is different from one side to other side. And this, this is why you see here different colors. In the same time, as I said to you, be positive to challenge the negative and push to lead to the success. And this is my point of view, and they have to defend it. Why I am defending this idea? Because, of course, what I, am, what I have seen during this period is about six months, there are some effects, some impact on the economy. I don't want to discuss it because I know the economy is sad. I would like also to discuss about the individuals. Individuals in this uh, impact, or this COVID-19, they become selfish. Everyone is trying to protect himself, whatever. We try to buy, and you see what happened in the United States. Sorry to say that. They were looking, they are fighting for tissues, toilet tissues. This is not the thing. It means that the behavior of human has changed. And if we become selfish, what happened to the society? So the society, it will be affected. There is no relationship between social. And if we are thinking about e-learning to deliver lectures, it's fine. If, for example, for services, if I go to banking, it's fine. But what about the, the, the companies that are producing? Can they, I mean, are they able to produce physical product in virtual? It cannot, unfortunately. So which means the economy is affected, the social is affected, the, the, the psychology is affected. So what should we think? This is why I said, be positive in order to have, and this is why I give these examples, health, economy, social, and I said behavior. So the behavior is panic, 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 panic everywhere. Even in Algeria, in Canada, in US, in Saudi Arabia, everywhere, panic, panicking. A panic, it's lead people to behave negatively. For example, I would like to buy, to stock in my house. And this is what happened. I saw from social media, many countries, people are fighting to get products, which is, which is I think it's human nature. I cannot, I cannot blame people. So now it's our role as scientists, as people from the universities, from biology, from economy, from sociology, from psychology. So we have now, it's time to wake up and say, okay, what should we do? And how we can face, which strategy should be built? It's not a matter that, okay, to discuss the impact. Impact is there.
But now it's a, it's a serious problem. If, it, if this case of COVID is health problem, what happened? And you see now the war between China and United States. So what should we do as developing countries? So it's time to say, okay, what can we do? And this is the, the, the point that I would like to discuss it with you at the end of my presentation. And I said, the source, I mean, the behavior, as I mentioned, the behavior reaction of individuals is what we call, I said here, associated with social dilemma. It's a dilemma. Even we are living in a social society. I mean, our society, it's called social. But in the same time, I am behaving personally because it's, I am looking for my personal interest. He is looking for his personal interest. And I prefer to say, I mean, to erase it from the point of view, from the basic. I told you the example of the United States. It's a big country, it's developed countries, but people are fighting in the supermarket about issues, something, something simple. And this is, I think it's time to say what we are supposed to do. And I said here, to, to face, and I think it's our responsibility as a scientist, now to share or to make hand in hand in order to find a solution. And this is why I say innovation, collaboration, and knowledge sharing. And because my area is about knowledge management, I prefer to discuss this issue. And this is why I put a lot of pictures I'm talking about innovation. Innovation is a light. It means something that you can create a new collaboration. It's share my idea with your idea. It's not necessary that I am specialist in management information system and knowledge management. I, I work only with people from MIS. No, I have to work with economists. I have to work with psychologists. I have to work with sociologists, etc., etc., biology, physics, etc., because everyone. And I think I will give you an example that before I move to the positive side, in Algeria, I was really impressed. I was really impressed, I am saying. Because not, I'm not saying that because I'm an Algerian. No, I see, I mean, what, because I'm following what happened in my country. It's the same for Egypt. People are following what happened in Egypt. It's the same in Yemen. This is the same everywhere. But in Algeria, I feel, I feel like a revolution. Young people, they work hard. They try to develop anything. But they need to be coached. For example, I saw many hospitals in Algeria, they put these doors for sanitizing people. And after that, Ministry of uh, Health, or uh, he said, okay, no, no, don't use it because it has a, ne a negative effect. So how much we have spent, how much we have lost money, lost effort, discouraged people. From the beginning, scientists should say that this sanitizer, it's not has a positive effect. It has a negative effect. So why? So think about something else. Think about something else. So this is what I'm, what I'm looking from this. I mean, the, the focus of my presentation is how to share knowledge. And this is why I give you these examples. And this is the figure that I have developed. If you see the COVID-19, what is the impact? It's the, I said the social dilemma. There is a negative impact. So, and I see that knowledge sharing is here to face these challenges, is here to share, I mean, to, to find solutions for the future. Because COVID-19 is wherever he stay, one year, it goes. But there are other crises, other crises that any countries can face. And I'm talking, I'm, I'm trying, yeah, one, to wake up the developing country specialists. I am serious, sincerely, I mean, touch that, now I am convinced, it's, uh, this is why I become positive. Developing and developed countries, they face the same problem. And sometimes the solution in developing countries is there. And developed countries are still, see the statistics, try to go to statistics and see how many deaths in the United States, how many, uh, for example, cases in developing countries and how many cases, you are, I mean, some people, they said, okay, because developing countries, they don't have the tools, etc. No. It's something happened. Even if it's not a health problem, think about future cases or future situation. So this is why I would like now to start my lecture. Now, I said my point. I said here, knowledge sharing enables to learn from mistakes. It's time to learn from mistakes. And COVID-19 is here to share, to say to us, okay, wake up and learn from my, I mean, our mistakes. And this is the reason that if we learn our mistakes, 
it's empowered and engaged us. It gives us power and it gives us the possibility to be engaged. It's not a matter just to describe statistics and make statistic analysis. This is the mean, this is the, 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 the median. No, 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 no. I'm sorry to just say that, but it's time now to learn from our mistakes and that this is why we have to be engaged. And this is why I said knowledge sharing is, I mean, whatever the organization, whatever the society, it means it's a culture. It's a culture. So why we have to work isolated? Social uh, people or psychologist people, they are work in their area and they don't share their, and this is the issue. Many publications from the universities has been developed, but unfortunately, it has been kept in the drawer or we use it only to be promoted. We are looking only for a promise. We become selfish. So if you are doing, this, um, if you are doing, of course, research in all area, you have to share it with the others. They take advantage and they can use it. This is why I said here, knowledge sharing increase individual engagement. It's an engagement, Yahuan. You have to think about it, engagement, to be engaged with the society, with engaged with the humanity, engaged with people, engaged with the world. And knowledge sharing also foster individuals' own. Because if I did something, why the other side they do the same thing? It's a duplicate work. We are two different efforts for one purpose. No, if I'm doing something, I share it to the others. And this is why I said here, organizational culture is the main driver. It means that we have to create a culture. And I'm talking about culture, I'm talking about universities in Arab world, universities in developing world. It's time to change our culture and it's time to, I mean, to push ourselves to share our knowledge. It's if you want to success. But looking for individual purpose or focusing on only on promotion and that it's not the solution. You have a responsibility in front of the society. We have, not only you, I am also responsible. If there is something happened in the world, in the environment, we are responsible. So this is the reason that I said I am positive and I would like to say here, knowledge sharing promote engagement. So engagement, you will be engaged with the society, it means whatever happened, so you will be there, the first, the first person you'll be there. So the engagement, it means that you feel a value, you, are, you add value to the society. Not, it's not a matter that I am teaching in the course or in the lecture and I leave, it's I'm doing, it's, 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 it's a job, but, What's your engagement? It's something else. So this is the reason that I said here also about individual empowerment. If I feel that someone in Yemen, in Egypt, in Malaysia, in wherever is doing the same topic, so we have to share our experience and share the experience and see what is the difference in Malaysia, in Egypt. If there is some differences, everyone have to learn from each other. So it's give me a power to develop myself. This is why I said encouraging employees to build their personal brand. It means I am looking for my brand to be a force, a specialist, but it is more powerful if I can share my, uh, my experience and my statistics, my research, my research output with others and we can put another. This is why I said knowledge sharing. In the same time, Yahuan, knowledge sharing, it's, I said it's a culture. So we have to develop this culture. And I said, start at the top, solicit ideas, encourage product market discussion, and training on employees or training or I mean people. It doesn't matter. And Alhamdulillah, I, I was happy to see that we have our uh, guest, uh, Dr. Ashraf. I think it's time, I, and I would like to share my 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 uh, future experience with the Arab Union for the Sustainable Development because. I think we have to choose the topics. We have to, 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 to think about the knowledge sharing. I give some examples here about what I'm thinking about in the future. Examples about knowledge sharing. For example, uh, all the faculty, all the people that I have yani heard during this period, some countries like Algeria, like Egypt, they, have, they are facing a problem of IT. So now we have to think, we have to push the idea to the top of the government saying, okay, IT is, it's below the expectation. So what we have to do, and we are talking about education. Education at the same time, 
education, I'm not talking about university, I'm talking from the kindergarten until, of course, the university. So this is, and we have to share our knowledge and we find a solution. IT people should be involved. And not all IT people, IT people, education people, everyone. And see what are the problems that we are facing. The second thing is to review the curriculum. It's time to wake up and see because many universities, they develop one curriculum for the life, which is not correct. For example, I will give you my example in my university. It's time now we realize that, for example, risk management should be included in all specialties, not only in economy. Because, I mean, I think people from finance, they said, okay, uh, uh, risk management, yes, it's there. But others, others like physics, people that are developing, we are talking about startups everywhere. It's a, mod, a model, a new model. So if the startup doesn't know risk management, how we can, how we can succeed? And they give you this sanitizer in front of the door, uh, doors of the hospitals. So people, they spend effort, time, etc. But at the end, the result is a memo from, uh, from the Ministry of Health. They said, okay, okay, drop it. It's a waste. What about the environment? What should we do with this, what we have developed? Should we throw it to the environment? And this is what I'm saying. Well, it's time to review the curriculum, see, to include some courses, like, for example, knowledge management, like, for example, I said, risk management. And you can, I mean, just, just I'm dropping some ideas, but a lot of courses that should be removed and some courses should be changed. And also, the, the thing that yeah, I mean, many faculty or many universities, especially universities, I'm talking about the management of the universities, they are, their problem is just to deliver the lecture. It's fine. It's good to talk about. Now, are we using our proper technology? Or are we using? Uh, sorry, sorry, doctor, please. Uh, time, time. <laughs> time okay. is over a long time ago. <laughs> okay. okay, Mike, I mean, I would like to finish here. It's since I am positive, I said success is there if we collaborate. And I said, when we learn to teach, when you get it. And if, uh, this is my concern, if anyone in this attendance today from everywhere is having the same attitude, positive side, I am willing for, her future, for a future project that he can join me and I am, uh, you are most welcome and sorry to be late. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, doctor, for your presentation. Actually covered uh, the point of view of COVID-19 from uh, so many uh, points of view, which was really interesting. I, I, mean, I, I enjoyed your presentation. I enjoyed the way you, uh, your approach to accepting your point of view, actually. Uh, thank you very much once again. And let me invite uh, Dr. Shu Tassira, and Nasir, Dr. Nasira. Uh, Dr. Dad. Dr. Nasira, uh, is it right? Yes, uh, I would like to, to say, I, uh, I would like to say uh, something. Uh, yeah. Now I can understand the, the nature of the CV of uh, Dr. Amina Haritanet. Um, I would like to welcome, to warmly welcome him. Uh, his CV is uh, very rich, but uh, I can say simply that he is a very presti prestigious expert in ICT across uh, the world. So uh, thank you for uh, your uh, rich and valuable um, uh, presentation. Exactly, he is. Yeah. I, I enjoyed his presentation, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we we'll, we'll like to hear him more and more, uh, but we are uh, taking I away the time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Dad, I, I think that uh, Kamel Din Hagani before Nasira Shirgan. Nasira? Before, before yeah. Nasira. Before Nasira. <laughs> Can I, uh, okay. Don't you think it's going worse? Okay. Uh, uh, Nasira. Uh, Professor Nasira is uh, unfortunately absent uh, because uh, she has uh, an international commitment with uh, the FAO because uh, she is yeah. an expert in food and uh, food loss and waste. Uh, so, Dr. Dad, you can shift uh, to another participant. Oh, so she left. So let's go to the next one. Number four will be Dr. Isma. 
Dr. Isma from BBA University. Is she around or he around? No, no, she is no. not here. So let's go to number five. Uh, it's Kim, it's Dr. Kim Elidin uh, from uh, Sila University, M. Sila University. Is he around? Number five, Dr. Kamil Iddin, M. Sila University. Is she around? No, yeah, I'm around. Okay, okay, good. Thank Mike, you. You're welcome. Thank you. What you are going it's, to talk about with us? Yeah, it's my pleasure to be with you here. Thank you. And my my speech will be will touch with the pioneer experience to world society in light of coronavirus COVID nineteen pandemic in um, Sila University from mm -hmm. Algeria, with collaborative with uh, my co collaborator uh, Dr. Hashmi Benoit, which which uh, which is uh, the vice lecturer of um, Sila University. Sila University has made several positions of confront uh, the coronavirus, which forced students and professors to enter into an exceptional vacation from mid-March to our days. This pandemic, this pandemic was uh, not an impediment for Sila University, as it is a several model for uh, in the form of university uh, to Sila community in general and students and its professors uh, also. I will uh, divide my speech in few steps, in few uh, numerous uh, titles, subtitles, which are distance educations, remote uh, uh, scientific uh, conferences, open doors, and psychological accompaniment for other students uh, uh, in uh, baccalaurea. Also, I will talk about some uh, invitations that Psyla's uh, 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 university students and PhDs are, are works on to help uh, the COVID-19 uh, defense. And uh, finally, I will uh, conclude with uh, the Psyla university ranking, the last ranking of Psyla university in digitalization. So the first point, e-learning and MSILA distance education. MSILA University is continue uh, its efforts that started two years ago in numerization and uh, gives e-learning and distance uh, education, which uh, in MSILA University, we trained more than 1,000 professors on how to use uh, e-learning platforms such as Moodle, such as edX, uh, MOOCs, etc. This uh, training, have uh, results more than 3,000 courses, 3,000 courses published on Moodle platform and about 2,050 uh, MOOC that will be published uh, in the last, uh, in the few uh, months this year. Also, I can said in the virtual and remote scientific conferences in the last three months with the pandemic about 50, uh, 75 of uh, the program conferences and uh, scientific events have been held online which means we uh, uh, which means the 75 about of the programmed conferences and events are held in their time uh, about uh, we can see uh, among them the international conference of force measure and its impact uh, on mobility of legislations and juridic in covid as model which is uh, held uh, within the uh, law faculty also we can see uh, the international conference of digitization and each application which is held in the mathematics and uh, informatics uh, uh, faculty, uh, the, uh, the International Conference on Poverty and its effects on society after the coronavirus and corona pandemic, which held in economic faculty, the Entrepreneurship Forum, which is held also in uh, uh, the economic faculty, 
scientific quarantine, which is uh, 30 events made by the university at uh, the mouth of Ramadan, each uh, night, 30 events. Also, in the society, uh, society aids of uh, Tila University, uh, open doors to the university through the technique of remote lecture for third second for third year secondary students coming in uh, on 2020 baccalaureate exam. These open doors have uh, followed by about 46,000 uh, followers on the social media. Also, a psychological accompany for the same. Uh, public, which are the third year secondary students for which have uh, baccalaureate in 2020, which also all these events are live on social media, which have uh, about uh, 20,000 uh, followers. Also, in the each uh, society for Msila province, uh, the University of Msila provided the wilaya of, uh, with professors and researchers specializing in epidemiology and microbiology, belongs to the laboratory of the Faculty of Science, and put them at the disposal of Pasteur subsidiary temporarily. With the university administration has also transferred the PCR device from uh, science faculty laboratories to the Pasteur subsidiary. This device has to immediate diagnostics of potential virus COVID. Project also the production of hand defection and defected uh, in roof of uh, buildings, which is used in our university and also transfer, transferred to the Wilaya uh, buildings. Also, uh, one of our PhD students have uh, made a long-term health mask, which is not, uh, which is uh, disinfected, that differs from regular masks currently in use, the, in use in hospitals. The mask made of 100% healthy materials duration that may last, that may be uh, used for a year, a full year, flexible and premium design, adaptable to all ages of users. That can be used by uh, child and adult people. Uh, also, Msila University has been a membership at the United Nations 2020 Academic Impact, for years achieved this regional development of girls. Uh, also, Msila University have provided to, to, uh, to its uh, professors and employees a lot of uh, e-services, electronic services, which can help us to uh, get our necessaries uh, necessary uh, at distance such as requesting administrative document uh, remotely, requesting training aboard remotely, uh, the monthly salary are revered remotely to all university employees automatically each month. So each month, each, uh, each employer at University of Msila will have its uh, monthly salary by electronic way. Uh, okay, I try to uh, uh, to resume my uh, speech. To do not uh, get a lot of time uh, from uh, your uh, valuable uh, webinar. Uh, thank you so much for your invitation, uh, and uh, I'm so pleasure uh, to present Msila University uh, in this uh, international webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor, very much for your uh, presentation, interesting, interesting presentation. And uh, uh, would you like to say something, Laila? Uh, 
Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we are happy because uh, Dr. Nasira Shilgal uh, joined us now. Uh, so, uh, yes, so please, uh, uh, can you give her uh, the welcome, 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 Dr. Basir. Okay, thank you, Laila. Uh, Dr. Nasira, what are you? Having, I am here. <laughs> Dr. Yeah, yeah. Hear me. Welcome. Thank you for your coming back. And uh, please, uh, the mic is yours. And uh, go on, go on. Thank you, uh, Professor Dad. And uh, hello, everyone. It is a pleasure for me to participate in the first international webinar, University Role uh, uh, in Serving Society During the COVID-19 Pandemic International Experience. First, I thank the director of our university, Mohamed Bashir al Ibrahimi BBA, Professor Abdul Haq Boubatara, and the pre president of the webinar, Professor uh, Shutri Ahmed, for having organized this important event and for uh, inviting us. So, uh, please uh, let me share uh, with you uh, my screen. Uh, so, uh, today I will, I will talk about the role of research and researcher in the management of the COVID-19 crisis and I will share with you uh, the experiences, the experience of uh, the characterization and valorization of natural resources research laboratory, uh, Borjbo Relig uh, University. Uh, world hunger is one of uh, on the rise, yet uh, an estimated one third of all pro uh, food produced globally is lost or goes to, uh, to waste. We, have, uh, we all have a part to play in reducing food losses and waste, uh, not only for the sake of the food, but for the resources that go into it. Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, EPU, is partnering with government international organization, the private sector, and the civil society to raise awareness on the issue and to implement action to address the root of the problem. EPU is also working with government to develop policies to reduce food losses and waste. Our research laboratory, represented by myself, is part of the EPU network and participated in this context in several events as the training of trainer on the EPU methodology for food losses analysis in Morocco and uh, in the technical consultation of the voluntary code of conduct uh, on food losses and waste reduction and uh, training exp exp expert network in Egypt. Till the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, virtual meeting have been organized with the aim of discussing the system used by different actors around the world to manage food losses and waste uh, during the, uh, the crisis. It's organized by the EPU in the farm of uh, uh, Tuesday, Zuminar series and entitled International Innovation in Agri-Food System to Achieve the Sustainable Development. And uh, uh, the first one, uh, we have attended uh, uh, some of these uh, Zuminar and I am going for, uh, to you a summary. Uh, the first one is the Zuminar uh, 5 uh, on the role of young uh, uh, in agri-food system innovation in the context of the COVID-19 uh, and uh, this seminar has addressed the following question. Uh, first, how have young ag tech innovators been affected by the crisis? And uh, how can government and partner foster youth innovation in ag tech during COVID-19? Uh, how can government and partner foster youth 
uh, innovation in ag tech during COVID-19 and uh, uh, what initiative uh, exists to support young people that can be scaled uh, and uh, up and uh, replicable. Uh, the Zoominar uh, 6 uh, on preventing food losses and uh, waste during COVID-19, innovation for more sustainable food system, uh, which is the, the, the down in uh, uh, for June, uh, and uh, we have address uh, address the question uh, the following question: uh, What are the driver of food losses and waste along the, the value chain? How is the decision making of the value chain uh, actor affected affected by COVID nineteen? What key innovation can uh, support value chain? Uh, actor to prevent food losses and, and waste in light of uh, COVID-19 impact on the food system and uh, what role could we play uh, public sector and the national organization, organization uh, priv uh, private sector and the researcher to uh, support a value chain actor to prevent uh, food losses and waste in this context. The Zoominar uh, 8 uh, on uh, innovation for more sustainable uh, food uh, system has addresses, uh, has addresses uh, for a good. Uh, on uh, the question, uh, the, uh, the, the question, what are the elements of success of uh, technology and innovation initiative under COVID-19? What policies and strategies are needed to enhance private uh, public partnerships and supporting innovation and technology adoption? And what framework is needed to enhance regional cross border collaboration in agri-food system innovation and technology? Um, our laboratory uh, has also participated in other virtual events organized by other international organizations, including Organic Ecosystem Boosting, Cross Border Organic Ecosystem through Enhancing Agro Food Alliance, organized by EIM, the Mediterranean Agron Agronomic Institute, Bari, Italy. Uh, and the ISQA FU's e celebration of the desertification and Druze Day on uh, 22 uh, June, uh, Beirut, organized by the UNISQA, United Nations uh, um, Economic and Social Commission uh, for Western uh, Asia and uh, in Lebanon. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention and uh, for any comments or questions. Please contact the uh, the organi organizing committee, because in my, uh, I have uh, to integrate another virtual uh, meeting entitled International Technique Webinar Sustainable uh, Soil and Land One Management for Climate Smart, uh, Smart Agriculture, Preventing and Mitigating uh, Land Degradation, uh, organized by uh, the EAM uh, Mediterranean Agronomic Institute. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nasira, for your presentation. Uh, interesting presentation. Actually, you uh, you you raised uh, a, a different point of view, discussing the problem uh, during the uh, problems during COVID-19, food uh, waste. Um, it, it's 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 a new approach, and uh, it's interesting. Thank you very much. Let's thank start you. with the and invite. Uh, uh, Dr. Laila, you have something to say? No, no thank you. Uh, I have. Okay, Who's next? It should be Dr. Sayed. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sayed yes. from uh, Malaysia. Is he yeah. around? Yes, no. I am. Yeah. I am my yes. Hello. Uh, you welcome. You welcome, Dr. Sayed. Thank you very much. Uh, so my, please, uh, your mic is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Madam Chairman. May, may, may I have the permission to share, to, share, to share my presentation? Go okay. ahead. Can you see my presentation? Yeah, please do it. Okay. Thank you very much for your invitation. 
and uh, I, I thank uh, the university for its uh, her kind uh, kind invitation, University Burj Baji, Burj Buaririj, and I thank the rector of the university, Professor Abdul Haq Boubetra, uh, and uh, the president of the webinar, Prof. Amal Shutri. Thank you very for invitation. Now it's uh, Maghrib time in Malaysia, but I will manage, inshallah, to present it within the the allocated time. So uh, my short presentation or summary of my work is on the university role in serving society during COVID-19 pandemic. I will give the INSEAF, which is the Global University for Islamic Finance, experience. And it reflects the, also the Malaysian experience in handling or in addressing the COVID-19. Because the, practically, if you can you follow the news, Malaysia was proactive in in addressing the, 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 this pandemic by initiating some, uh, or by anticipating the, the issues before it happens. And that's why uh, in my presentation, uh, okay, let me just, uh, okay. Now uh, in my presentation, I can divide the role of university uh, with regards to handling or addressing the issue of, uh, of COVID into two. First, the core, the role towards the core stakeholders. Of course, university, when it comes to its role, it has to give priority to the student because they are the core stakeholders. And of course, they are, the students are connected to the society. So it has also another obligation, ethical, uh, scientific, even pr practical obligation towards uh, the uh, society at, at large, including the government, including the supporting bodies, the scientific research centers, and uh, other uh, centers. I think I would just put the full, now I think better, I can move, okay. Now, the first part, which is the role university towards its uh, core stakeholders who, who are the, stud the students. Of course, just for short information, NCF is the Global University for Islamic Finance. It's a dedicated university just focusing on, focusing on postgraduate students, PhD and masters, and uh, executive masters also, uh, established by the Central Bank of Malaysia in 2005, and accredited by the M MACC, which is global, globally renowned uh, accreditation uh, center. So what NCF has done is it has first ensure continuity and efficiency in delivering its program. So this is first is first is based on the in, uh, proactiveness and anticipation. The university has a running online program since 2010, which means the university is familiar with the webinar, with the online program, and it has collaboration, global collaboration with the, with the countries in, in Africa, in Middle East, in Europe, in the UK, in the US. So the initial experience is there. Second is anticipate extraordinary circumstances. We have at the university, and I hope that there is in Algeria, what we call business continuity management. We have all the potential extraordinary circumstances and how to address them. For example, there is an internet disconnection in the compass and all the core study of the student is based on data, connections, internet. So we have to set this BMC, we call it, and we have to have a business continuity plan that, for example, if the internet is dis disconnected, how long it should be remain disconnected. For example, we agree that it should not be more than four hours or five hours. This is what we have anticipated few years or few years ago before even this COVID has happened. That's why we were able to handle the, 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 the issue of the COVID in a smooth and, 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 and uh, proactive way. Now, for the university, the, as I mentioned, it has, she has, it, the, it has the experience of e-learning and also it has enhanced the e-learning in this COVID-19. Because we all believe that the prerequisites for successful e-learning is first of all, government strong will and solid infrastructure. Because the will without infrastructure will not, will not add, uh, assist the university to deliver or to discharge its, its responsibility in, in, in a sound, solid, strong way. So government, and as I, I will show now, that has the 
wheel and solid infrastructure. The second prerequisite is lecturers or instructors satisfactory expertise. You, if you have a lecturer who, who is not familiar with the e-learning, with the platforms, with the all facilities, you will have a big problem in handling the e-learning e because he is illiterate. And how, come, how can the illiterate teach the student? The third thing is the student knowledge, commitment, and discipline. And I focused on the third one, which is discipline. Discipline is very important. Knowledge can be acquired, but discipline in terms of attending, signing the attendance, following up, sum summarizing is very important. So those three prerequisites that are essential for the success of the, the e-learning or for the success of discharging the responsibility of, of the university in this COVID pandemic. So now, in short, I will just, I will touch into general points. First is the government commitment and sound infrastructure. Adoption money to, for, for its adoption of technology, we'll show it in numbers. First, Malaysia combine ambition, commitment, and forward planning. So there is a desire to be among the leaders in technology, especially in educational technology and financial technology. And there is what is called the forward planning. If you Google in the internet, you will all see the blueprint of the central bank, the blueprint of Ministry of Education, the blueprint of the government, the financial plan. You will have all a detailed one and benefiting from the best global or international best practice. Malaysia, was the first country, and this may be, may be amazing, I have presented this one in 2016 conference, and they, 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 in first time, they did not believe, but when they checked, they realized that Malaysia was the first country in the world to issue biometric passport. It was in 1998, 99, and it was the first country to issue biometric identity in 2002, which is 18 years ago. So this is adoption of university. Malaysia moving towards cashless society. In 2019, uh, the Malaysia, the transaction, the e-online transaction is amounting to near to 18.2 billion, which is equivalent of 4.5 billion USD. Now, I, 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 am, I am advising in one bank, now the central bank have decided to uh, go away from the cash. In next year, no uh, check. Next year, there will be no check used in the whole country. Everything will be online. So this is adoption of technology. Expansion of the e-court system. E-court system, not just e-court. I am, I am advising a bank. We have not used paper for now for five years. All there is what is called board pad. All the meetings, all the discussion in your iPad and all you can share your comments. You can make your comments all paperless meetings, paperless the, the, the discussion. E-court, the, the court in Malaysia started this one in 2006. I, I have written a paper in 2006 when they started the e-court, the uh, e-court the e system, which is using the paperless or what is called paperless environment. Southeast Asia is known, as you know, Southeast Asia is the highest, percent, uh, is the highest percentage of mobile internet usage in in the world, with, with Malaysia ranked among the 10 in Southeast Asia. I will give you just general numbers. Malaysia ranked 89 in the world in, for mobile speed, uh, which is the average, the average download is 22 megabyte per second, and the average upload is 11 megabyte. Whereas in the, in the fixed fix broadband, which is the wireless, Malaysia is ranked 39, with the average of upload of 81 megabyte per second. Now I think now in Malaysia, the individual they can opt for 800 megabyte, which is the maximum. A normal normal uh, citizen he will opt mail usually to 100 from 100 to 300 megabyte, which means the infrastructure is there to facilitate to facilitate the e-learning. E uh, of course, Algeria. I have the I have the uh, st statistic for Algeria. Unfortunately, it's. It's yet to, to compete with other countries, 132 in the world mobile banking, and unfortunately, which is, which is not good generally, but I, I believe that will improve soon, which is 173 for the fixed broadband speed. The e-learning, I will not go into details because of the time constraint. Those are the existing facility, and if you see in the middle, the Global University for Islamic Finance is using the 
learning management system. I will give you just snapshot without going into details. Now, this is the brief comparison between the selected e-learning because we did not go to this option after, until we compared the adaptation in terms of the Canvas loop. Those are the core, core uh, providers, core platform providers for LMS. You see with comparison of user account, activity grading, course category, those are all platforms for e-learning. It's not platform for other, for business, just for, for teaching and e-learning. Uh, this is the sample without going into details. This is a sample of our LMS e-learning. So we have this, you have to, every lecturer has, or uh, lecturer has, has a, a username and password and everything is online. Uh, courses, modules, assignments, attendance, everything is online, is all recorded. And if a student, we have a special email just dedicated to the, to the, to the, to the module or to the, to the students within the group. And so this is, this is uh, the, uh, if, if we call it ideal. And you can see this is the existing course information, assignment, quizzes, webinar. This is webinar, which is using Zoom and other facilities. And we have also a section for reading material. And we have a forum discussion. Sometimes when the students, they have some issues with one, 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 uh, one subject or, or one uh, area of case study, they would request for forum discussion. And we will have these discussions to clear all the gray area issues in one topic or one subject. So this is the webinar session. I will not, I will not, this is the webinar and you can see all the webinar. Now, now I will, because of the time constraint, I will go for, for, the, for the second part, which means addressing the stakeholders, uh, the, the, the society at large. In, for the Global University for Islamic Finance, which is NCF, we are handling uh, strategic research, applied research. First of all, we are the core, support for the Central Bank of, of Malaysia. The core strategic research applied, especially when it comes to interbank liquidity management, interbank uh, investment or activities, uh, NCF is handling with ISRA, of course. ISRA is the research core of, of uh, research arm of the Central Bank of Malaysia. We are, uh, act, uh, uh, we are handling all the, the, uh, all the core uh, research requirement from Bank Ringara to address the, the uh, uh, important research. For example, recently the, uh, the central bank has decided uh, or has, has ordered the, all the banks to, to, to allow uh, customers, bank customers for moratorium, which means for six months. So they have issues, the guideline issues, the issue, the order, and we have addressed the, the uh, ap applied part, which is related to the different sectors in terms of personal financing, corporate financing, SMEs, and all those things. So we are handling this one to support the central bank. Uh, second is active involvement in national and international scientific events. So we have on the 2nd of July, a webinar, international webinar on risk sharing finance and inequality in benchmark. We are inviting core experts and inviting discussion to enrich the discussion. And we have also other, other, uh, other, uh, other uh, events. We have also local and global governmental initiatives to address the financial impact. So uh, as I mentioned, the moratorium and interbank and cross-border liquidity management, especially in this uh, scarcity of, uh, of liquidity. We have, as part of our contribution to the society, we, we are collaborating with international organization and even entities. We have collaboration with the World Bank. We have, we have collaboration with IMF. We have, we have collaboration with the World Waqf Organization. And now ISRA is in the mid, ISRA and Securities Commission, SC is for Securities Commission, and the RFI, which is uh, Responsible Finance Investment uh, Foundation, and its CEO is, is based in the US. We are in the initial discussing of issuing a coronavirus response waqf sukuk. We have already approached Majma and IDB for blockchain endowment platform to address COVID financial impact. And we are also enhancing the, those are research, we are enhancing the crowdfunding platform structures and product to assist SMEs because the core affected 
uh, part of the uh, of, uh, of of the militian and even regional they are the SMEs because those small shops small organizations they were all forced to close their shops and now they need to restart the business and they need to get some financial support advisory support and and other things so those are the core uh, uh, role of uh, NCF and also it's also the role of other universities especially those uh, specialized in in applied uh, applied uh, how to say uh, sciences like uh, finance like even law and other things they are very active in supporting the government this is in short my presentation with regards to the role of university uh, with regards to the COVID-19 and the uh, experience of Malaysia with a special focus on the Global University for Islamic Finance. Thank you very much for your attention. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Sayyid, for your uh, nice presentation. Actually, I enjoyed it. Uh, there is a, a definition. It's a learning management systems. Uh, actually makes me just a step about, uh, on it because it's uh, maybe somehow related to my, uh, uh, to my specialization. Uh, not, uh, not a lot of, uh, of, uh, of places or universities or uh, faculties used to use such uh, system. Uh, only those who are uh, uh, discussing or who are studying such uh, kind of, uh, of studies like computer sciences, like uh, management, like information systems. Uh, I think this is uh, the point we should start from now on in order to, 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 to work with or to deal with the, uh, the risk of COVID-19. We need to use learning management systems all over the universities, or with all over the universities, with all over the uh, studies, uh, topics, it's, it's important. It's the time to start with. Thank you thank very you. much for an interesting thank you very much. Appreciate. Uh, thank presentation. You. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Doctor Leila, do you have something to say or yeah, move yes, to the next? Yes, yes sure. please. Um, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Saeed. Uh, I appreciate his uh, paper Saeed because... Or Saeed? <laughs> Saeed. Saeed. <laughs> Saeed. Yes, I appreciate his work because uh, I'm interested in e-learning and I worked on uh, for uh, six years. Uh, the CV of uh, Dr. Saeed is uh, very rich, but uh, in summary, I can see uh, that I can say that he is an expert in uh, Islamic uh, financing uh, and banking. So uh, thank you very much for your intervention, uh, Doctor. Uh, go on, uh, Doctor Dad. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. now what's, uh, I think Dr. Salah Din is he around from Algeria. Dr. Salah Din, around, uh, it's the BBA University. No, let's move. So Dr. Um, yes, around? yes, he is here with us. Yes. Okay, thank, you, thank you very much. We received. Do you hear me? Yes, yeah, I saw you. you as well. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, thank okay. You. please, please, the, thank you. Uh, the uh, mic is yours. Thank you, madam. Uh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm really uh, honored to be a part of this uh, webinar. I'd like to thank Sbatra, uh, uh, the uh, rector of the university, and uh, a special thank to Professor Shutri uh, for holding this uh, webinar or uh, organizing it. I think uh, I thank also uh, you for uh, the well organization for this webinar. And before uh, before I start, uh, let me uh, say that I totally agree with Mr. Uh, Nihari that uh, the COVID-19 uh, is not all negative things, but it contains also positive things. Uh, but uh, if if we just uh, take advantage of them. Uh, my, uh, uh, let me in the beginning share with you my, uh, my screen, if it's possible. I would like to share the screen. Yes, you can do it, yes. Okay. Okay. 
can find it. You can just move the, the mouse. The file. And, and ah, the file. Okay, uh, if uh, you are not ready, uh, doctor, we can give the uh, mic to uh, Ms. R Ramona Bristol and uh, we can return back to you, if you permit. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay. I'm looking for the file. Dr. Dad? Is she around? No, no. Yes, she is here. Yes, she Hello. can talk now. Is she? Okay, go ahead. You are welcome. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much for your invitation today. Um, and um, I, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation, but I will just say a few words about my experience. Um, at Northampton University and um, to start with I'm just gonna say a few words about me I've been teaching for several years now and currently I'm teaching at Northampton University where I'm also uh, conducting research um, on teaching and learning and I'm doing um, my PhD and hopefully I'm gonna submit my thesis um, in a couple of months um, I hope that will be in uh, October. So to start with, I want to say a few words about how we engage um, students in the online teaching um, during COVID-19. And um, I, I think um, as um, some other um, um, academics before me said, uh, there are not all, uh, only negatives, to um, the uh, rapid switch to online teaching now, but there are so many other positive things. It's just, I think all lecturers and uh, also the support staff in universities nowadays need to adapt to these changes and uh, try to um, see what works and what doesn't work. So I think uh, there's going to be a lot of errors and a lot of trials in the next coming months I, until we all find a, a, a suitable way of transmitting knowledge um, to students. So um, what I uh, teach at the moment is academic English. Um, and um, that refers to the language and skills taught to students who will um, enter their higher education st uh, studies. And due to the current lockdown situation, um, all the courses that I teach, and that is pre-sessional, in-sessional, I also teach a final year module, academic conventions to uh, business studies, and all of these have been taught online since uh, March 2020. And they will continue to be delivered online in the 2020-2021 academic year. Now, because the turn to online teaching was sudden, was such a rapid turn that we all faced uh, challenges. So teachers and students faced so many challenges and we all had to adapt very quickly. The effects of coronavirus may forever change how future students are educated and how they gain the skills needed for academic study. So we don't assume that the things will go back to normal now because they will not, there will be a new normal, a new um, delivery, a new approach to teaching and probably um, new perspectives of how we see education from now on. Now, one of the biggest concerns for teachers, um, at least at the university I'm working at, is how we will continue to engage students and monitor their progress remotely. With uh, teaching languages, with what I do, such as the academic English, um, in the academic English context, um, this is uh, even a bigger challenge considering that language and languages in general, teaching language involves many practical activities and task-based workshops. Um, the software 
for delivering teaching has been equally challenging since data protection. In Europe, there is this uh, GDPR, the data protection legislation, uh, which affects um, all the businesses as well as the universities. Um, so it addresses universities in the UK um, as um, a, a, some many universities, to be honest, do not use Zoom because of the Data Protection Act. This is um, quite an important issue because they have universities have to use the same software that they used before COVID-19 for their um, students online portal. Um, so now at the University of Northampton, this rapid transition to online delivery has not been easy. It hasn't been an easy task. Um, various department team, uh, my colleagues, um, also um, managers I've talked to, we all came together to change the curricula and assessments to address the demands of the online teaching and assessment in order to ensure that um, our students remain engaged in their programs of study and they successfully completed. Now, because of the stress and the changes associated with COVID-19 um, and the current situation, many students become worried about their studies. Some of them may have become depressed and there are many students who are thinking to defer their studies. So we don't really know the number of students who will probably start in uh, September or October in the new academic year. Um, I'm just going to say a few words about the software, um, the online software that both students and lecturers use at Northampton University. And this is called Blackboard. Um, it's quite a famous software um, used um, by many other universities. And despite its limitations, this resource offers a number of collaborative activities. Um, for example, uh, there are blogs, there are wikis, and also very important, the possibility of grouping students during an online session. Um, as lecturers, we had training sessions on the system, um, the online tools that um, we utilize throughout the course and methods used in online teaching. So the university and the deans offers um, us this uh, opportunity to learn how to use the system and they make our life easier by doing that. Now, um, in an online environment, like um, the one we are all using at the moment, student engagement is critical to learning. Additionally, student-centered learning environment works best in both face-to-face -face and online delivery of courses. Now, students are not just watching someone giving the solution to a problem or presenting their point of view, but they, they can be engaged and they can do activities such as working in a group, collecting real data and analyzing um, real world events. And an indicator of student engagement is their learning behavior and lecturers activities. So learning behavior is closely related to uh, posting on forums or taking online quizzes and tests or, or post questions, um, even seek clarification from the lecturer or from their uh, colleagues and making learning visible. Um, now, many academics from uh, various disciplines at Northampton University use um, a software which is called Padlet. This is something like an online virtual board where uh, students and teachers can collaborate. Uh, we can all share experiences. Students can uh, talk to each other. They can interact to each other. Um, 
Another challenge for teachers is how to monitor the online behavior of students and make sure that they remain engaged in the learning process. Um, since uh, March, um, all my teaching has been online, so that was a challenge that I faced um, myself. And I can say that it's really um, important to know that the students are listening and they are they are being active in their listening because anybody can turn on their, their microphone or they can type when a question is um, asked by uh, their academics but they don't um, actually engage with the content that is being transmitted from the lecturer to uh, students um i'm just gonna say a few words about the materials now the materials that we use um to currently teach online now are very similar to what we used before we didn't actually change them a lot um but we've changed our approach to present the course materials now all the course materials are um, saved on the online portal for students and staff but there is an expectation that the students do some preparation beforehand and following the COVID-19 lockdown teachers have started using a flipped classroom model all my colleagues all the um, the other lecturers that i've talked to have been um, using this flipped classroom model um, this is a, a new approach to many of us um, i don't know how um, new it is as um, a, a, an approach to teaching uh, but um, um, I can tell you that um, in such a model, we ask students to prepare before lectures. So it's not like in the um, normal classroom environment where we uh, prepared our PowerPoint presentations uh, prior to the session or we had the handouts and all the other activities. Now we ask students to do some work prior to the class and we ask them to prepare prepare uh, for the um, online class activities. Um, for example, uh, students might be asked to read materials or to watch video podcasts um, because a flipped classroom model is thought to improve student performance and increase student perceptions about the instructional approach. Um, now there is also research on this model which is believed to increase interaction between the instructor and um, students during online classes um, now as i mentioned before um, lecturers in northampton use uh, this system which is called blackboard collaborate for teaching and collaborate is also a good uh, platform for associated chat posts for announcements um, we can create chat groups with the online class and the tutors can also form um, what is called breakout rooms which allow small group collaborations and i've used this um, in my teaching for uh, short discussions or for group projects where i could group students in the online class and give them a task and then go into each of these rooms and um, just monitor their interaction and monitor their per performance um, so especially in the subject that I teach the breakout rooms are very useful when students work on group tasks such as discussing a topic or creating a poster or even working on a group project um, I'm going to go to concluding my presentation and I would like to say that um, considerations of future learning um, and teaching must take into account an educational system which is even more 
focused on uh, students' needs, not only on the theoretical side, but also on their flexibility and methods of learning. Um, COVID-19 has opened new ways. What about the time? <laughs> okay, so um, I think that we need, as a lecturers, uh, we need to uh, quickly adapt to enhance ways of a course delivery. And I'm going to finish here. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I will do my best to answer. Thank you very much for your presentation. Actually, remind me with my... Uh, at that time, I was a PhD student in UK as well, in, at University in, uh, of London. So it was, um, it was a very hard work by that time. I hope you finish soon and you'll be... Thank you very much. Yes. Soon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Leila, do you have something or uh, ask Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Salah Dean? Just a big hello from Algeria to UK. Thank you. That's really good. Good. Hey, Dr. Salah Dean, have you finished? Are you ready? Ready with us? Where are you? Yes, I'm ready. Yeah, please. Mike is yours. I'm back. Yeah, good. Uh, sorry, I didn't know how to use, uh, how to share with you the screen. And I, uh, now uh, I open uh, my PowerPoint. Uh, let me show, uh, share with you my presentation. Okay, okay. It's okay. Okay. Okay, uh, today I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, the e-teaching instead of uh, the e-learning. Uh, what's our rule as a lecturer or uh, a teacher uh, 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 in this uh, crisis of the COVID-19? Uh, as you know, the corona pandemic has introduced many changes uh, on practices, policies, and behaviors on the level of people and the countries. The higher education is uh, one of the most uh, affected sectors by this pandemic. And uh, it is uh, the most affected because uh, it's uh, the most uh, crowded and uh, the virus mu uh, must be uh, spread in this environment uh, very quickly. So that the uh, governments shut down all the uh, education system or uh, close their uh, uh, their uh, schools and universities in attempt to limit the spread of the coronavirus, uh, and thus that's why the government sought to find solution to complete the academic and educational uh, path of the students. They have moved towards e-learning platforms and started talking about this mechanism. Although uh, it's not a new thing, but uh, uh, many countries and many uh, universities have the habit to use it, but in the middle of this uh, crisis, uh, it emerged uh, on the surface. And because the generations Y and Z are uh, really attached to smartphones and different apps uh, on the one hand, on the uh, other, uh, the need uh, to technological, uh, technologically highly uh, skilled personal integrating technology with the educational process has become a global trend mm -hmm. and providing educational material mm -hmm. through mobile devices has become a catalyst to learn and develop new skills uh, instead of satisfying uh, with traditional learning. Using, uh, using the internet, <coughs> sorry, using the internet in learning uh, process is not new. And according to the website uh, techcrunch.com, this application has been downloaded 62 million times uh, between March uh, 14 and uh, 21st, 2020. Do you see the uh, PowerPoint? Uh, no, unfortunately, we can't see. Something went, went wrong, I know.
That's it. I think there is a problem with your presentation. Uh, uh, no, I'm coming back. I, I came back. Um, the website uh, crunch, uh, techcrunch.com. These applications have been downloaded uh, 62 million uh, times uh, between March 14 and uh, 21st, 2020. That's with the uh, beginning of the lockdown in many countries. Uh, another thing, the uh, iOS, <coughs> sorry, the iOS and the Google educational software increased by 45% in one week, the same week. Uh, despite the positives of the e-learning, despite the positives of the e-learning, uh, some questions emerge. Uh, first, the effectiveness of this uh, method vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the traditional methods, and are we re really prepared for this, and what challenges, challenges uh, the e-learning is facing? First, the educational content. Many teachers uh, resort to instructional design uh, that achieves effectively the goals. This design is generally based on determining the students' educational needs and setting goals and appropriate means to achieve them. In addition to tools for measuring, uh, measuring the extent of learning and feedback. However, we face many challenges and some aspects should be considered before using e-learning. The most important are, the educational tools, choosing the educational tools represents a fundamental challenge for the electronic instructional design uh, more than the traditional one, especially because we need uh, the interaction of the, the students with uh, the teachers and the material. This will motivate them uh, and help achieve better results. Here, the teacher must make an effort to determine an appropriate uh, interactive tool for the process of learning uh, students, uh, for sure, it's a little bit difficult, but it's not impossible. The same thing applies to evaluation process. Uh, and here I mean the examination and how evaluate uh, the students and how give them uh, marks in the exam. While written examinations are considered uh, the most common method, especially in midterm and final exams, Despite the noticeable uh, shift towards alternative assessment methods, the electronic evaluation uh, seems to be a little bit difficult due to the difficulty of monitoring a process and uh, trying to avoid uh, students from cheating using the same devices that uh, they are seeing lectures uh, on it. Of course, uh, it's true that a lot of programs and applications are available on the internet to achieve the student's interaction in the uh, educational process, either individually or in groups, uh, such as uh, quizzes, uh, Socrative, mind maps, Padlet, uh, like uh, the professor before me said, uh, etc. Beside these uh, applications, uh, provided uh, beside the application provided by Google and Microsoft and Apple and other uh, societies. All that the teacher needs is a good planning for uh, choosing the, the convenient method for each educational goal. However, they may not yet be sufficient for the final, uh, for the final evaluation for students. Convenient different, convenient different needs and uh, learning, sorry, convenient different needs and learning paths, uh, as we know, uh, the paths of uh, studying are different. Uh, there are some uh, students that learn from uh, aud uh, auditory uh, and uh, some others learn from visual uh, classes. Some others are kinesthetic. Uh, some uh, others are read and write learners. And here the teacher's responsibility is to vary his means to satisfy different needs. For example, uh, speaking, uh, speaking during uh, the whole time of the lecture may be convenient for uh, listeners, but it's not convenient for uh, others like kinesthetics. Second thing is uh, the teacher readiness. Are we ready as lecturers, as teachers, to give this kind of uh, lectures? And this, uh, and this is the question we are facing. One of the biggest problems facing all the teachers, I mean, uh, the baby boomers, for example, is the readiness to use modern technology in uh, the learning process. This is not a diminution for them, of course, 
but it's a reality imposed by the late discoveries of uh, many technological devices and apps. Maybe they are not uh, may, uh, keeping pace with the, uh, this improvement in technological things. Some of those teachers uh, sense the importance of learning and using modern technology, but many others uh, are feeling that uh, they, are, they are dispensable. And however, the tyranny of technology in our daily life and uh, the younger generation's uh, passion for it, they are really attached to technology and to smartphones, to chat in rooms, etc. In addition to the environmental uh, awareness about the need to minimize the paper the, or the use of paper, etc., led to a gradual and large shift towards technology. This had uh, shocked this, uh, the baby boomers uh, generation and the X generation, which became forced to use uh, technology and uh, in details, not only uploading and sharing files, but uh, keeping pace with some other kinds such as uh, Zoom and other, uh, other platforms. Another category that doesn't belong to this category, I mean the baby boomers, but they belong to a newer or younger categories uh, that denied or ignored these variables of technology, of course. It didn't use technology appropriately in the past, and now they are living in the same dilemma as the baby boomers. Uh, this, uh, this dilemma is uh, keeping pace with uh, the technology and modernization, but however, uh, it's probably better than uh, the older generations because they have uh, the habit and they are familiar with uh, using technology. And before, uh, therefore, the, uh, the COVID-19 has imposed uh, the formation of giving lectures to uh, design to teachers uh, to learn to teach them how to use technology and how to use uh, these uh, platforms to give lectures. Uh, this are, uh, this is no doubt, there is no doubt uh, that they will face uh, funny challenges. For example, uh, they will see their uh, students are fast in keeping pace with technology uh, comparing to them. And uh, they have only one solution to uh, take it with a sporty spirit and with some fun, of course. The third point is the technology availability. The technology uh, availability um, I mean, uh, it's an important access, uh, success factor for e-learning. There are different levels of uh, this challenge. For example, uh, the devices, the internet uh, access, and the uh, speed of the internet. And uh, of course, the bundles uh, which, uh, that, that are uh, profited. So, each is a challenge itself. The student or even the teacher uh, can have the device, but maybe uh, he doesn't have the access to the internet in the first place. Uh, this, maybe he have the device and he have the access to the internet, but uh, the bundle uh, that he got his, uh, uh, is a little bit uh, insufficient to cover these materials. And uh, if it's available, uh, maybe it's uh, in a flow, uh, in a, uh, in bad flow, let's say. In this point, the teacher should be aware uh, to, uh, of the conditions of all the students. And in order to choose the most convenient method for the group, for example, in, uh, if, uh, he, uh, is, if he's facing the problem of uh, the bundles of the internet, maybe some students have uh, bad bundles or insufficient bundles, he may put uh, or upload his uh, lectures in a small videos on that platforms. And finally, uh, certainly the COVID-19 crisis that we are facing and uh, its consequences on the educational sector has pushed uh, the e-learning towards the interface and it became an irreplaceable option. Thus, teachers will face great challenges to cope with this sudden uh, shift and they will uh, overcome it with appropriate planning. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam.
Okay, thank you very much for your uh, uh, interesting presentation. Actually, I, I try to uh, be uh, it's, it's, fast. It's an interesting topic, and uh, I I think all of us, uh, uh, when we had such approach or such topic, we are all in the same room. So. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, and I, I, I think you are all now very, very exhausted. So I'm not going to make it or to pile up the exhaustion. So I will be uh, uh, a little bit um, uh, faster and I, I will not be adding uh, any exhaustion to you anymore. Uh, Mine will be about the experience of Cairo University and some other Egyptian uh, universities in the time of COVID-19. Uh, actually, the problem st started in the middle of, the, uh, of March uh, and uh, started with the uh, Ministry of uh, Education and uh, Scientific Research. Uh, when he uh, discussed the, the problem with the parliament and he started to talk about uh, uh, the precautions or the remarks during the meeting of the parliament committee of education and scientific research, which was held to discuss the higher education minister's mechanisms to uh, manage the second term of the uh, current academic year in light of the coronavirus. Uh, what before Corona or COVID-19 uh, was totally different from now. Uh, it has become after uh, a pandemic uh, outbreak, the minister said, noting that the higher education ministry has taken precautionary measures to protect the university uh, community. That includes, of course, students, academic staff, and uh, technicians. Uh, he also was very, very interested and strongly insisting uh, to uh, keep uh, all, the, 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 all the staff in the university are uh, safe. Um, he also noted that the Higher Education Ministry has taken part in a video conference meeting with the United Nations Education, Scientific and uh, Culture Organization, UNESCO, especially that the, uh, the current crisis facing universities in all over the world, not only Egypt. Uh, it affects uh, more than 850 million students across the world. In this regard, the minister highlighted uh, the ministry's uh, detection, uh, decision to uh, cancel, to cancel uh, overall and, uh, sorry, to cancel oral and written exams for the second term and replacing them with research factors. Uh, the Higher Education Ministry's uh, Supreme Council uh, of Universities cancelled midterms for the spring term across the public. Non, uh, across the public uh, universities, across the non-profit uh, and the private universities as well. Weight will be added to the final exams for the term uh, according to an emailed a statement from the council. Uh, final exams may not be uh, scheduled before uh, the end of June and actually it will start now by, by the moment now it's, it will start at the beginning at the first of July. Uh, so the decision is uh, is uh, properly uh, uh, taking its place. Uh, any final schedule for that day must be moved accordingly. The statement read as uh, read in the email sent by email. Uh, as uh, for graduate students, the council left it according to each university. Actually, uh, Cairo University online, online teaching in times of COVID. Uh, 
suddenly we found ourselves in Cairo University, Stan Smith Marsh, um, in each have, have been, everything have been closed. Uh, everybody was trying to adapt uh, uh, to the new conditions, uh, what we are going to do. All academic staff at Cairo University got the task to prepare online lectures for the rest of the term. It was a panic. It was something, um, time, is, uh, time is so limited and we need to do a lot, a lot of things. Uh, thousands of lectures and millions of students uh, suddenly find themselves in a uh, challenging situation. How to, pro how to proceed uh, with lecturing, what online tools to use, how to prepare uh, the students for their exams in the, in the best way possible. Questions, all these questions, I mean, uh, academic staff at Cairo University and others, other universities have to find their answers. Uh, PowerPoint presentations for the rest of the lectures in all subjects were prepared. Best sound programs were applied to the PowerPoint presentations in order to explain each slide for the students. Uh, a, a friend of ours or a colleague of ours, in quotation marks, she, she, she wrote, I miss students' free uh, feedback. I miss seeing their faces. Uh, the unspoken questions, marks, question marks, I, I miss them. I miss to listen to their questions and comments, which shown, which show me what is not understood yet. I miss the white board uh, for discussing and exampling. So it's, it, that, that was actually the feelings uh, all uh, staff members in, uh, in I, I think actually at all universities, not only Cairo University, they, they had that feeling. Um, we have as well, uh, prayer to the, Council decision, uh, a number of other universities in Egypt spoke on how they were planning to adapt exams and assessment to the COVID-19 situation. The British University in Cairo, in Egypt, for example, uh, has shifted its exams online and is working in parallel with e-learning platforms, but is determined to maintain its exam schedule because it is connected with international exam schedules. Uh, uh, the American University as well uh, in uh, Cairo uh, is also considering holding off on exams and tests that require uh, Proctory for at least two weeks, but that oral exams can still take place and essays be submitted. That was a question. The university is encouraging different kinds of assessment to be used rather than replying exclusively on exams. Students at some other universities did not face midterm exams. And their biggest and their biggest problem is, uh, problem is what to do about practical and technical exams, such as those taken by medical and nursing students. Um, the council's decree does not clearly outline how these subjects will be uh, at the beginning. But now I, I, everything is a set. Look, that, that was by the time I wrote the, uh, the, the brief. But now everything is OK now. Uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has uh, changed the way the world works, um, uh, learns, and communications since March 18, 2020 uh, and earlier for states 
poor states like Italy and China and um, countries have closed their uh, proverbial and uh, literal doors, having immigration, closing uh, restaurants, closing coffee, coffee, closing everything. So it's um, it's something needs some other ways to deal with in order to overcome uh, in order to uh, overcome such problem. I mean. um, Dr. Hassan Badrawi, uh, he is uh, uh, he is the one who founded Nile Badrawi Hospital, uh, and he is as well uh, a member of the parliament faced by uh, the Egyptian uh, healthcare system in the special uh, web in our series titled Health and Educational Challenges for COVID-19 in Egypt and Beyond, uh, which was held by the American University in Cairo, uh, 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 School of uh, Global Affairs and Public uh, Policy on April. Uh, and I outline three sequential uh, priorities for response to the COVID-19. That was activity, one of the activities to confront uh, COVID-19. The first one is a widespread testing. We need widespread testing. Uh, we need global co coordination in preventing transmission across borders. We need also the third one, uh, strength, uh, strengthening the quality of Egyptian health care as well as the system capacity. So uh, it's in brief the three, the, the three effective, uh, three effective uh, categories we should take care about. I mean. uh, also, um, the final, uh, uh, the final is uh, uh, um, uh, the, start, the need to provide students with the tools to shift through scientific or internationally biased information. Cultivating such critical still, uh, skill sets is one of the areas for improvement at AUC and in Egyptian higher education more broadly brought to high or brought to light by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we want to have learners who can function in this global world which requires uh, professionality in connectivity and data labs. Digital learning is the way forward, is the way out from that Problem actually. Uh, Cairo University, as well, uh, on, on the other side, it's, um, it, it reveals some details, uh, reveal details of some COVID 19 treatment uh, protocols. Uh, actually, that one I mentioned in the brief uh, was, uh, was by the time I wrote the, um, but now there is a lot of protocols, more than this, uh, uh, and we are waiting. Uh, university hospitals actually are working with, uh, with, that, with different protocols. They are trying the which, uh, switch, uh, what's the efficiency of each, uh, each one, and uh, uh, so actually, researchers are working by that time uh, on a treatment uh, protocol, but uh, as I told you, it's uh, that one a little bit old, so we need uh, uh, the new ones. Uh, I want to just lay uh, uh, in, um, I want to also to say that uh, uh, universities, hostels, uh, with the faculty of uh, for, for uh, all the universities in Egypt, uh, they uh, offer their hostels, they offer their uh, uh, medical staff, uh, nursery staff, they offer them to the uh, Ministry of Health uh, uh, hostels, uh, to the private hostels as well. Uh, 
when they have in their war of the conference the uh, COVID-19. So they opened their hospitals, the educational hospitals, they offered their uh, experiences, uh, they offered their medicine staff, med or medical staff. Um, uh, actually, uh, it, it, it's a very hard work they, uh, they did. Anyway, uh, the same brief, I tried just to go and pick some paragraphs um, in order to be brief, in order to give you the whole picture or the whole idea in a brief. So thank you very much. And I would like to thank everybody who participated in this session. Uh, I really, for myself, I enjoyed uh, leading or I enjoyed uh, chairing such session. I enjoyed uh, to, to, to work with uh, Dr. Laila Sheikh. Uh, with the Dr. Shutri, Amel Shutri. I enjoyed working with you all. I'm happy uh, to be with you again. I will not uh, hesitate to, uh, to say yes when you invite me. I will say yes, definitely yes, because I really enjoyed your work. Thank you, you very are, much. You are all, always welcome, Professor. Uh, so uh, thank you to, uh, to all the participants. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dad, we uh, we must now start the discussion uh, session uh, of uh, 30 minutes, uh, but uh, I invite you uh, mm -hmm. uh, kindly to be uh, a tough uh, president uh, because uh, we have only 30 minutes for uh, <laughs> yes for, for discussion and uh, everyone is uh, exhausted. Uh, so, uh, so uh, Dr. Dag, you, you you'd like to. Um, to select the uh, uh, contributors, or we um, we leave this uh, task to Lubna because okay, we have let already. Me, uh, let me know. Uh, do, do you have some questions coming from the chat? I mean, yes, yes, we have. We have uh, already uh, many for hands. Who, uh, for who? Uh, for who? Questions uh, for uh, Hania Najim and uh, Dr. Amin uh, Talat. Uh, okay. Nasser Mohammed. The three, Which the one? three of them? Yes, yes. Let, let's, raised start. Raised. Let, let's start with them. Let's with call them. Dr. Amin. Uh, Hanin, Hanin Najma. Hanin Najim. Hanin Najim. Hania or Hania Najim. Okay, Hania. Should I start or should uh, Hania start? Hania, Hania, please. Okay, go ahead. Hania, please. Uh, Lubna, please give, give the mic to Hania. Hania or Hania. Lubna? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm trying to give her the mic. Okay. I think she will can talk after some seconds. If it's not possible, Lubna, please move to the next. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. She might be left. Uh, the next. Dr. Amin Nahari. Yes, yes. I will be brief. I'm not going to ask any question, but I have some comments and I would like to share my experience. Because when I make, made my presentation, I was talking about knowledge sharing. It is fine. Am I convinced that knowledge sharing is very important, very useful? Let me just. Take uh, Dr. Nasera, she was talking about waste food and loss of food. Mm -hmm. We have a great experience here that we develop a project in uh, KFUPM in King Fight University for the master degree of supply chain management. And uh, in order to, uh, to avoid wasting food, so we develop a model and alhamdulillah now, we are, I mean, this model is working fine. Uh, and it's called, uh, the, the model is called It'am. It, um, it means that we are collecting food from hotels, from weddings, from whatever, and we share it with the poor people. So it means that if we share knowledge, for example, from I mean, uh, uh, biological or botanic or whatever, to management, it means we find a solution. The second thing, uh, Dr. Saeed from Malaysia, Ms. Ramona from Northern Napton, and also uh, Dr. Ben Hassan from Burj Bari Ridge is talking about e-learning. I have, I told you in the beginning that I have wrote uh, three or four papers about e-learning 
It was in 2006, 2007. And what I see now is the same thing. Because most of the presenters, they are talking about the tools. For example, some they are using Microsoft Teams, some are Google Classroom, some of them are Blackboard, etc. I told you that I have published papers related to e-learning. The problem is e-learning, but most people that are mistaking considering e-learning as a solution. It's not a solution. Why? It's just a tool that we can use it to monitor it. I will tell you why. Because in e-learning, there are three stakeholders. The student in one side, faculty in one side, and the technical in the other side. Mm -hmm. the so the faculty knows how to deliver. Probably it's, and we have to discuss it, because if we ask people from education, they say no, because we have to determine what we call assurance of learning. Are we delivering the lecture correctly to the student? Are we satisfying the expectation of the student? Are we satisfying the expectation of the market? Are we, et cetera. All these questions of the expectation are too long. The second point, the student knows his responsibility. And he saw that he has in front of Google Classroom, Blackboard, whatever, he can't get his lecture. I can, you, I can give you my experience this semester. Most of the students that are- That's right, that's right. لا, let, let, let me just finish it, Dr. Blena. Let's It's a great responsibility as a faculty. So the faculty is to deliver the lecture. I said to that. The student, when I see the statistic for this semester in my university, most of the students are satisfied. But there is another issue, which is the cheating. How we can stop the cheating? Because the student, he finds himself in his, in his room or in his home, and he can do so this is the thing and the third stakeholder that also we have to consider is the technical side the technical side i'm talking about technician his relationship with the faculty his relationship with the student and the challenge as i told you and you can check in your university in my university hackers are very active and i said hackers are very active and see what happened damage in the, in the using the it is very big and nobody, because we are more concentrating to e-learning, e-learning. I agree with you, e-learning is a tool. It's a solution for a temporary, but we have to, be, to discuss with the, the and people from education. They have to give their point of view about what is the level of education. We have to talk about people who are you, you are concerned with the security. I'm talking security IT. I'm not talking about security policemen. No, no. I'm talking about IT security, how to, how to protect, how to how to save our network, et cetera, et cetera. So we have to consider also the psychologist. Then a psychologist is very important. I will tell you something else, is what we call addiction. If we are talking about e-learning, and in the other side we have another challenge, is addiction. So if I open the, soul, if I open the discussion, I will never stop. This is why, in my presentation, I didn't want to go to the classical way to just to give uh, some statistic. I said to you, is a knowledge sharing. And they give you three examples. It'am in KFUPM, we use it in supply chain management. So alhamdulillah, I said alhamdulillah, our university contributed in order at least to give food for poor people in the same time to avoid wasting, wasting food. And I mean, I can give you a lot of examples, but this is what I said. I am convinced now, and I urge every one of us in this nedwa, in this forum, please, it's time to wake up and say and see the truth in your front. Don't say be, I mean, keep, keep behind yourself and say, okay, we are fine, we are doing. No, I have, I think it's time to wake up and with time to share our knowledge and go back directly to the point. It's not a matter of e-learning, it's a matter of a many things. So this is why I need that every, everyone should go back to his responsibility, say, Am I responsible in this society or not? If I'm I not responsibility, I teach, I give grades. Salam alaikum, I go for vacation. Thank you very much. Sorry to take from your You're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you very much all. Thank you everybody. Thank you for the participants. Thank you for the organizers. Thank you for everybody. And um, uh, we, we need to, uh, to close the session and say yeah. bye bye. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah. So usually, usually we close uh, sessions with uh, thanks. So I'd like to thank, uh, uh, to, think, uh, to say thank you to uh, Professor Bubatra, uh, Professor Shutri Amal, and uh, Dr. Ashraf, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Dad, and uh, Mr. Habitush. 
uh, for their uh, efforts in this uh, opening uh, session. And uh, I would like also uh, uh, a special thank to all uh, of the um, keynote speakers uh, for their commitment to be with us and uh, for their uh, via valuable uh, speeches. Uh, thank a lot to our uh, guests who were uh, very patient with us and uh, attended the, the session until uh, the end uh, uh, of yeah. this session. Yeah, they, they were <laughs> simply they, they simply they made my day. Thank okay. you. You made my day. <laughs> yeah. Thank so, you very much. Uh, uh, so you're welcome. I hope that the session was um, uh, very uh, fruitful for our uh, all our attendees, and um, uh, I will be uh, will, uh, we will be uh, very uh, happy to see you tomorrow uh, with our honorable uh, eleven researchers uh, and uh, have a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Tomorrow. Thank you.